just kind of officially became the co-op about nine months ago now. Um, mm -hmm. And did Nexodus exist before that? Uh, did it convert it, to a co-op or, or is this a brand new thing? Yeah, so when I, I lived in LA for, for many years. Um, when I started in, in the business, I was out there and uh, you know, around, around 2009, 2010, somewhere in there, I started to, you know, want to have a family and, you know, do those types of things. And so I was looking for some job security and, uh, you know, I was working at the time I was working at Sony, which is a big company. Um, and I had been there for, you know, I was pretty dug in there. I was there for a couple of years, which in the visual effects business is a long time. Um, and, uh, there was an attempt to unionize, uh, the studio, um, at that time and it, and it failed and that um that hit me pretty hard because i really like i felt like that was going to be the thing that was going to give me a little bit of you know job security because even though i had been at sony i was technically a a, a um, employee a staff employee um i never really felt secure in my job just because the industry is so volatile and they were moving a lot of work to vancouver at the time and so it was like well you know, if I buy a house here in LA, you know, am I going to have to, you know, travel to Vancouver to pay for that house in LA? You know, it was like, it was becoming that kind of a thing. So around that time, my wife and I decided, you know, that we were just going to, I was going to try and do my own thing. And that's kind of um, when it started. And I had already kind of been doing some visual effects work on the side, like at, like moonlighting and stuff like that. So I had some clients of my own. Um, and so I decided, you know, if I really spend time on this, I could probably do this full time and we could move somewhere where the cost of living is way cheaper. And, you know, uh, and so we did that. We decided to just do that. So uh, it took a couple of years to make the transition, but I moved out to, I live in Lawrence, Kansas. Um, and we moved out here, bought a house, and I started a small company called Mass Exodus. And my intention for that business was to convert it to a co-op when I had enough people working with me that we could do that. And, uh, you know, for the most part, it was just me. But then, like, I started bringing some friends in. If I got a lot of work, I would bring in, like, my friend Frank, who's a member of the co-op now. Um, I'd bring him in. He would do some work with me. And I would kind of, even though we weren't officially a co-op, I would share the profits as if we were a co-op. So... Um, you know, on projects where Frank did a lot more work, he would end up getting, you know, uh, like a, a good, a better cut of the profits at the, at the end of it. And so um, Frank was like, oh man, this is great. You know, let, you know, let's make this, let's do this all the time. And so, uh, but we were always missing, um, it, it, it seemed to be just timing, never kind of worked out, but we were always missing like uh, you know, John, for instance, like we needed that person like John who could be the business side of the business and bring work in while the artists are working on stuff. Uh, Cause I found that, you know, after a while, like I just couldn't, uh, I couldn't do it on my own anymore. Cause I was doing the work. I was getting the work. I was doing the marketing. I was basically the whole company, you know? And so um, mass exodus never ceased to exist, but I started basically working directly for another company um, as a visual effects supervisor remotely. And I did that for um, like three years or so. Um, and then I, I guess it was maybe, what was it, John, like two years ago or something like that when yeah, 2018 you kind of came in the picture? Yep. Um, you want to kind of take it from there? No, it was, you know, it was good timing. You know, I had, uh, like Anthony said, I had uh, kind of chased a lot of this work around the globe, <laughs> so to speak. He had mentioned a lot of it up and went to, to, to Canada. And that, you know, that is a whole other story that we could have a whole other conversation on. So I won't even go there. Just know that around the mid 2000s or I guess 2007 to 2012, really a lot of, a lot of work left California and went to Canada for uh, provincial and federal tax incentives up there. Uh, that combined with the uh, currency exchange advantage really made it cost effective to do do work there as opposed to in the U S um, and I, I moved to Vancouver. So I moved from Los Angeles where I had worked for 11 years and moved to Vancouver to kind of 
do that thing. And then, you know, at the same time, my wife and I had two children and I think, you know, you have kids and maybe like what you're doing in your life, you kind of reevaluate and things change and you develop different priorities. And I think we decided we wanted to move back to the, to the U S to be closer to family. So I'm in Ohio now. And, um, you know, Anthony approached me to do this and I was still trying to figure out kind of what was, what was next for me. Um, cause I had all these years of experience in this industry of what am I going to try? Let's try to do something. And Anthony approached me with this idea of doing a fully virtual visual effects studio, uh, developed as a cooperative that would allow people to work kind of remotely from anywhere on the planet. And, you know, that this was in 2018, this was way before coronavirus or anything. So that wasn't even on our radar when we started this. And, you know, when I had moved to Vancouver, I did so for another company called uh, Pixmundo. I was uh, helping expand their operations to Vancouver. They didn't have an office there. They, it's a privately owned company that's headquarters uh, in LA. It started as a German company, but they had seven, seven offices globally. And I opened the, helped them open the Vancouver office. And in that process, you know, I did a lot of financial math on uh, what, because they were going to have to make investments in hardware and stuff and technology. And I did a lot of financial math on what, what the best direction was to take. And a lot of my financial math pointed towards virtualization, utilizing uh, uh, like a compute solution like Amazon or Google, as opposed to having physical machines in a building, so to speak. Um, and that for the, really the first time in about 2016 was viable. You know, prior to that, there were bandwidth limitations and, you know, just compute limitations that really didn't make it, uh, didn't make it a viable solution. But in 2016, it started to become one. In 2018, when we had this thought, it was definitely at the forefront and both from an, an effectiveness standpoint and a cost efficiency standpoint was kind of, you know, the right way to go, so to speak. And I think it will continue to even get better. And I think, um, you know, the, the writing's kind of on the wall for the old, the old method. And I think this is probably, you know, we're one of probably the first people to, to maneuver towards complete virtualization in this business. Now, coronavirus happens and a lot of things get accelerated and acceptance of people working from home in a business that's traditionally pretty protective of its data has opened up quite a bit. And other people are certainly making strides to do, you know, what we've done. We may have just have a little bit of a head start on them. And we're certainly not a big company. We're not the size of industrial light magic or digital domain. Um, that's okay. We'll get there someday, maybe, <laughs> but, um, you know, I, I think kind of just getting, getting, getting back to the point of it, I think in 2018, it was the first time that that was really the way you could design a business. And that's kind of the route, the route that we decided to take. And, you know, getting back to something I said a little bit earlier, you know, there's no single technology that really allows any one company to do what we do better than another company. A lot of it is in, is in the, is in the brain power of the employees. And also along, along with that, you know, back, you know, five, 10, back 10 years ago, let's say in this business, the ability to do this or even to start on day one took an enormous initial investment, like millions of dollars in computers and in render farms, the size of warehouses. Like it, it just took a lot of financial assets and resources to just start. So there was a huge gateway to entry for smaller companies, especially, you know, like worker owned companies without maybe a bunch of startup capital. And what these like services like Amazon and Google have allowed you to do is kind of uh, switch to like a pay as you go model so that you don't really need to have the initial capital upfront because all of these computers that you're, you're using, you're, you're just renting basically, or you're buying by, you're paying for them by the minute. So you don't have to have $5 million upfront in a big building to start. And it eliminates, you know, kind of the gateway to entry for a lot of these smaller companies like ours and, and, and let's say worker owned companies where you don't have an initial investor that just, gives you $5 million and expects a, a return on investment. Mm -hmm. So I think both from a technological standpoint and, you know, it, it's, it's kind of just, it was very conducive to this happening in 2018. I think mm -hmm. it's yeah, yeah. going to go that way. 
very good decision you guys made two yeah. years <laughs> before to, it became mandatory for everybody. Yeah, well, if we could do without a coronavirus, I would. Uh, I would. I sure, would that would be better. Out, but but yeah. right place, right time for you guys. Yeah. So. But to, but to answer your question, so you know, the company kind of originally started as as Mass Exodus, which was just mm -hmm. uh, an LLC that I that I owned, and then when John and I came together with Frank in 2018, was it? Yeah, yeah, around there. 2018. Yeah, July 2018, we started uh, a, a, another LLC called Nimble Heroes LLC, and that was a partnership, um, and. That was like our intention at that point was for that LLC to just be organized as a cooperative. It never really, it was a partnership because all of us were equal owners in the, in the LLC. Mm -hmm. um, but then uh, last year around July, we converted that LLC into the corporation and, and the, the cooperative corporate. And that's when we like adopted our bylaws and mm -hmm. all that stuff. So that's kind of when that transition happened. I think the only reason we didn't do it originally in 2018 was just uh, legal knowledge of how to actually execute it. You know, mm -hmm. uh, we didn't know how to do it. It's not something that's on legal zoom. Um, <laughs> and it, you have to have a, a couple thousand dollars to pay an attorney to help you figure it all out, which I don't think we, we were ready to spend yet until we proved out that the business would work. And I think we use kind of nimble heroes as like a test bed for if the technology would work. And then once it kind of was proven that it worked and we were able to develop some consistent revenue, we we're like, okay, now let's, let's reorganize this the way that we intended. And that's, that was kind of the way, the reason it started kind of organically like that. Nice. For us. And so, and so you take mass exodus and nimble heroes and you put them together and you get an exodus, right? Am I, I mean, <laughs> yeah, 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 more or less. More or I'm less. a word guy, so of course I'm like, oh, okay. Is, I think is mass exodus next? proved mass exodus proved that there were clients that were willing to pay for people that worked remote. Yeah, you know, and nimble heroes proved that this new virtualization technology worked. So you kind of bring both of those things together, and then some elements of people from the outside that weren't previously in the company, mm -hmm. and you kind of have something that works. And then we called that an exodus. Nice. So, how many um, people? Do, uh, are actually members of Nexus right now? How many? Uh, six as of today. As of today. Six. Okay. So, yeah. nice. so you got a yeah. good uh, half dozen. And did, do you have people who are working with you, but are kind of like on the membership track or not? Yes. Or is that everybody yeah. that works? Okay. And, Every, and, and, everybody. And, everybody who's working with us is on the membership track. Okay. Yeah. So, and then, yeah. And after, after a certain period of like time of working, we have mm -hmm. a we have a chance to evaluate their skill set. They have a chance mm -hmm. to evaluate whether or not they want to you know be involved with a cooperative or if they just want you know just want a job. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, after that introductory period, then there's a, a formal application that they can submit once they've completed that that process, and we'll evaluate and invite them to become members if it if it makes sense. For both so we we have like a a thousand hour threshold that they have to hit mm -hmm. um, before they can apply and. Uh, as of right now, the only person to hit that thousand hours has become a member right when he hit it. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but we're looking on the cusp of like in the next couple of months here, probably adding a couple more people to that because they're about to hit those thresholds, you know. Mm -hmm. And there seems yep. to be broad interest in general in, in, in what we're doing um, because it's kind of unheard of. And a lot of people, you know, there, there certainly is a word of mouth effect happening. And some people we've hired only for contract positions only because it, you know, there were certain projects only lasted for a certain period of time, um, have expressed interest in, Hey, like, I'd love to work with you guys again. Is there a way I can like try to become a member, you know, in before the thousand hours. So like the interest is there. And now I think mm -hmm. once the, you know, the pandemic starts to subside and some work starts to pick back up, um, you know, a lot of these people that you know, had on and off jobs during the pandemic, we can start hiring back full time. It's just, you know, mm -hmm. it's a tough time out there for everybody. Yeah. Um, so in terms of you guys being all remote, I saw on the website that you were you know, incorporated in Cincinnati, Ohio. That's your address, I assume, because John's there, mm -hmm. right? Um, it, was, it was kind of it's so like, oh, of course, you know, we're all the great uh, Hollywood effects come out of Cincinnati. <laughs> Everybody knows that, right? <laughs> but yeah. uh, so, I, Anthony, you're in Kansas, correct? Yep. 
and Johnson, uh, Ohio, and then mm-hmm. your other uh, members and people working with you are are they scattered all across the country? Or are they kind of clumped they are. in we, the LA we all area kind of, or Vancouver? Yeah, we all kind of came from. I mean, we all lived in California. I think at one time or another, uh, mm-hmm. we all started there, and that's pretty much where we all met. Um, but uh, over time, you know, we've all scattered. So we've got John and I in Ohio and Kansas. We've got um, one of our members is in South Carolina. One is in um, uh, Oregon, and one and one is still in California. Two. So that covers okay. uh, two. Two are in California. I think there will always be a concentration in California, in Los mm-hmm. Angeles. That's because that's where a lot of the jobs are. But I think you know, as our company continues to grow and, and this work from home thing, I think I think to a degree we'll always be around. I think that people will start to disperse from California because a lot of people are mm-hmm. only there because this is where the, that's where the industry has historically been but right. you know now that there's maybe a window to like leave there and maybe be able to buy a house in an area that's a little bit more affordable or you don't have to commute as far to have an affordable house i think you'll see a lot more outside of california